ChatGPT just launched its new Canvas feature and it completely transforms the way you work with AI. With this new interface, writing and coding are now faster and way more streamlined. Fewer prompts, no more endless copying and pasting. It's all about making your workflow seamless. I've been using this feature nonstop and today I'm gonna to show you exactly how it works. Let's dive in and explore what makes this one of the biggest updates. So here we are in ChatGPT and to access the new Canvas interface, just click here and go to ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. Now Canvas is a paid feature at this moment and you do need the plus plan, which I believe is only $20 a month. First, I'm gonna cover all of the ways this new interface makes writing better and then I'll cover how it makes coding better. So let's start off with writing something. So say I want to create a blog post from one of my YouTube videos. So I go off, I get the transcript from my video, I give it a prompt to tell it to write this based on the transcript and we hit the arrow button. Now you can see the magic happening. So right off the bat, you can see the interface just looks way better. It looks more like a real document and it's just a lot more pleasing. And you can see it's now created this dividable section. You can drag this if you want to change it and you can see that it is creating things right then and there. And you can still type right down here, just like the regular ChatGPT interface. And you can see that it's created it for us here and it's created this document. So the first thing you'll notice is now this is like a live document, just like if you were working in Word or Google Docs. You can actually just delete things right here or you can add things if you'd like just like you're editing a document. So that alone saves on so much copying and pasting and giving multiple prompts and taking what it said, copying it into a document, making your own changes, pasting it back for more revisions, such a waste of time. And so that is really, really handy. The next thing you can do is you can actually give ChatGPT commands right within context. So previously, if you wanted it to rewrite this one section, you'd have to copy this section, say rewrite this section, paste it in, and then it would make a whole new document. But now you can actually just highlight what you want and you could say expand on this or rewrite this section or make it more like this, whatever you want. So I'm just giving a simple command that said expand on this and boom, it just expanded on it. So just like that, you can just go through here and work in line with ChatGPT. So no longer is it you give ChatGPT a command, it gives you something and it's just like this back and forth. Now it's really working with you collaboratively. You could say add five more bullet points. Now another thing you could do is say something like explain this. You can just ex ask ChatGPT, what is this? and they'll explain what natural language is and so on and so forth. So right there, you can edit right within the document and you can make contextual changes. Now the next new feature is this quick action bar as I like to call it and it has a bunch of handy features I'm gonna walk you through. The first thing is you can say suggest edits. So you can hit this button and it's going to read the entire document and then mark it up. And so if you go through your document, you'll see the comments it made. And you could even say something like implement those suggestions. And then ChatGPT will implement the suggestions while clearing its comments. Pretty cool, right? Then the next feature is pretty straightforward. You can actually make this longer or shorter. For SEO purposes, let's say it gave you a 500 word blog post. You're like, you know what? I actually want this to be a little bit longer. Just drag the slider and boom, it's making your blog post longer as you can see, and it's doing it in real time. Now, another thing you can do very similarly is change the reading level to match your audience. You just hit this and you go up or down and it will change the reading level. And you can even add emojis just by hitting this button. And then this is also another cool feature which is add final polish. So when you're finally done, you can hit this button and it's just gonna go through the entire document and just do grammar and spelling and some final tweaking and formatting changes for you before you're ready to copy and paste. Another handy feature it now has is the show changes functionality where when you hit this, you can actually see what 
it changed. Because sometimes if you have a long document, it's kind of hard to see what it changed or if ChatGPT only tweaked a small thing, you're not even sure what exactly changed. So this is a really handy feature. Another feature that makes this interface so much better is ChatGPT finally has versioning. So you can actually go back to previous versions and see what they were and restore that version or go back to the latest version if you want. We've all been there where ChatGPT makes an update and we're like, ah, I kind of like that previous version better. And so now you don't have to scroll through your chat and try and find that version and copy it and it's all out of order. And you know, now your latest chats are not that one. So no more that sort of annoying thing. Now it's there, you can bring it back and ChatGPT is always operating on the version that you want. I just covered all the major writing updates and now let's jump into the coding functionality. But before I do, if you're getting some value out of this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. Really helps get the video out to more people and helps out my channel. Okay, so once again, we start back in the ChatGPT interface here and make sure that you have 4.0 with Canvas selected and just give it the instruction for what you want it to code. Here, I'm just creating a Gmail auto responder for Google Apps Scripts and you just hit go and it's going to start coding. And again, just like the document view, it's going to open this interface, which is just a lot better and cleaner. If you've ever tried to code anything using the regular ChatGPT interface, you're gonna see something like this where each new command issues a new version of the code and pretty soon you don't even know what's happening. And if you wanna refer back to a certain code here or a certain build, you can't even get back there cause it's just buried in all of this. It's just not really user friendly. But now all of the code is in one place. So when you issue a command to change something, so for example, it's created a trigger that's going to run every five minutes. And what I love is it's explaining what it did here. Even if you don't know how to code, and I really don't know how to code much, I can modify some things, but it's explaining it to you in complete plain English. So if you're like, hey, actually, I want it to run every month, one minute, change to run every one minute. And then it's actually changing this document, not making a whole new version like I showed you previously with the regular interface. That alone is so much better. And just like documents, we actually have versioning because when you're coding things, sometimes you try a new build or you try a new feature and it doesn't work out when you test it. So you're like, actually go back to the previous one and let's try a different way of doing that. So this versioning feature is so important and so valuable, especially for coding. And now just like the previous feature, you could even just go here and ask ChatGPT. You could say, explain what this part of the code does if you so wanted to, and it will explain what it does. You could ask questions, you could do things contextually. If you understand code and you want to make certain changes in line, you can do that. Or you can even just like the document, if you are a coder, you could write your own code here and save it and work off the same document where ChatGPT is now like co-coding with you. And just like the writing interface, the coding interface also has a handy bar that does a lot of cool things. So one thing it can do is add logs. And what these logs are, are basically a way for the system to know if something doesn't work. So it's just a best practice. And so it's added those logs so that when you run the code, if something doesn't work, you'll get back a log report and ChatGPT will be better able to troubleshoot that code. Then you could likewise add comments and comments just make it easier to understand the code. So it will add in these comments to make sure that the code is more readable and someone else can work with the code. You can see I've added detailed inline comments to explain every purpose of each part of your code. So that just makes it a lot better and easier for you to understand what's happening in the code. You can see these green messages here. Also, this fix bugs feature is awesome. It does exactly what it says. Check out the code and make sure that there are no bugs. So if you're running into some issues, you can try that right there and you can see it's making changes. So that means that it's finding some things it thinks could be a bug. And so it's done that there. Now, another thing it can do is a code review where it's gonna go over your code and comment and make suggestions for how you can improve your code. And don't worry if you don't even know what any of this means because you could say apply your suggestions and ChatGPT will then just start coding 
this based on its suggestions and clear those comments just like in the document. One final cool feature here is you can port this to another language. So let's say you're like, hey, I wanna change this to PHP for whatever reason, and if you have a specific use case, then it's gonna rewrite this entire code in PHP or JavaScript or Python or whatever it is that you need for your specific use case. This feature just dropped a few days ago and I was actually about to cancel my ChatGPT Pro plan because you can do so much with the free version and then there's so many other free generative AIs out there that I really didn't see the sense of paying for it, but this feature is making me keep the Pro plan because it saves me so much time. You actually finally have a reason to use the pro plan. But let me know what you think of the new Canvas feature in the comments below and if it's helping improve your productivity. And while you're at it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Now, while the Canvas will streamline a lot for you, you still need to be able to give ChatGPT good prompts. Well, check out this video right here to learn one master prompt that'll take any prompt you give it and make it much, much better automatically. Or or check out this video for some easy automations ChatGPT can code for you so that you can use the brand new canvas.